very busy, so they will have time to take just a few questions, and uh, uh, then they will be on their way. So with that, Mr. Secretary. Well, thank you very much, Pete. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know you all heard the speech a short time ago by the President. <clears throat> and while there is not a great deal we can add now, uh, we did want to be as forthcoming as we can with you. At 7 o'clock tonight, as you all know by now, uh, Eastern Time, 3 o'clock Thursday morning in the Gulf, the Armed Forces of the United States began an operation at the direction of the President to force Saddam Hussein to withdraw his troops from Kuwait and to end his occupation of that country. At the direction of the President, I signed the execute order yesterday afternoon to undertake this operation, subject to certain conditions. It was to begin only after we'd met the terms of the resolution passed last Saturday by the Congress. Those conditions have been complied with and proper notice has been given as required. And the operation was not to take place if there had been any last minute diplomatic breakthroughs. The operation underway tonight, taking place in the pre-dawn darkness of the Persian Gulf, involves allied air forces of four nations, the United States, the United Kingdom, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait. As they undertake their missions, they do so after months of careful planning. At the direction of the President, great care has been taken to focus on military targets, to minimize U.S. casualties, and to do everything possible to avoid injury to civilians in Iraq and Kuwait. The targets being struck tonight are located throughout Iraq and Kuwait. Our focus is on the destruction of Saddam Hussein's offensive military capabilities, the very capabilities that he used to seize control of Kuwait and that make him a continuing threat to the nations of the Middle East. These are the same capabilities that now threaten American and allied forces in the Gulf. Our goal, the same one we have maintained throughout Operation Desert Shield, is to liberate Kuwait and enforce the resolutions of the UN Security Council. This portion of the campaign, directed against Saddam Hussein's offensive military force, is an enormously complex undertaking. It involves all of the services of the United States military and hundreds of U.S. and allied aircraft. It is an ongoing operation, and we must therefore limit the kind and the amount of information that we provide in these early stages. This obviously is different from what happened in Panama in December of 1989, where most of the operation was over by the morning of the first day. We understand your need for information about what will happen next, and we are well aware of our obligation to keep the American people informed. But you must also understand that we cannot talk about future operations without putting at risk the safety of those who will have to carry them out. I believe I can speak for all of us at the Pentagon tonight when I say that we had hoped to settle this matter peacefully. This has clearly been an agonizing decision for the President and the Congress of the United States. And we've reached the point of committing our forces to battle very reluctantly, only after the most careful consideration. But no one should doubt our ability and our resolve to carry out our mission and to achieve our objective. I have great confidence in the professionalism, the dedication, and the determination of the men and women of our armed forces. They are, without question, the finest young sailors, soldiers, airmen, and Marines this nation has ever sent in harm's way. I want to assure all Americans that we will do our very best to carry out the President's orders as quickly and efficiently as possible and at the lowest cost possible. We'd be happy to respond to a few questions. Uh, can you describe uh, the Iraqi Air Force's resistance, if any, their losses so far, and to what extent do you think that you've already achieved uh, air superiority there? Well, the operation's only uh, two and a half hours old, so I'm not quite prepared to take on your second question. So far, there has been no air resistance. Can you tell us if there's been any casualties so far? We uh, uh, will, at the appropriate time, be uh, releasing information on casualties. Uh, we're not prepared to release any specifics now. I will simply say that uh, the preliminary reports we have received uh, in terms of the success of the operation, and that includes uh, possibility of casualties have been very, very encouraging. The operation appears to have gone uh, very well.
actually came out, uh, you can just barely see at the top of the high ground behind us, the, uh, the, the ridge. We moved on the eastern edge of the ridge, came through, and there's a hardball road that's not on the map. Came up to this hardball road about uh, 1,500 meters back. Tank company was the first one in, turned the corner, came this way, came barreling down here. Couldn't really bring a lot of uh, a lot of tanks forward to bear, but they pretty much caught these guys napping. Uh, as we came in, there were still there was a lot of blocked traffic from the airstrike, so, so there was a lot of parked cars and 
stuff that was uh, that are, was just blocking traffic. But there was a 2S1 coming by and a couple of tanks, and there was still heavy traffic moving out of Kuwait City, trying to get past this checkpoint and hit the road north. As we came in here, the, uh, the first three tanks uh, immediately engaged a 2S1 that's no longer here, a T-55 that was sitting over there, and a T-62 that was over in this area. They killed, I think it was a 62, may have been a 55. That stuff started blowing up, and our Bravo company continued to move through here. We started taking small arms and some, uh, some uh, machine gun, high caliber machine gun from the vicinity of the building, and there were still active tanks up in that uh, ridge line right there. Our main concern at the time was that uh, our Bravo company, we wanted to, to clear the road, get the, the mechanized forces killed. So he turned the, turned the corner and headed north. There were still mechanized forces on the road to our north. So he killed some more tanks and some, uh, some personnel carriers. Moved out about uh, two clicks north of here, and then there's a natural little ridge line up there where he took up a blocking position to seal the northern flank. While Charlie Company was fighting forward, the Delta Company cut towards the, uh, the Cloverleaf. His, his mission was to go down and catch the Cloverleaf down there and cut it off so we could cut any traffic flow coming into here. He kept going through the through the minefield when he came out on the other side, went all the way down to the Cloverleaf. As he was working his way down, he engaged uh, some tanks and some PCs, worked his way down there to the Cloverleaf, occupied the Cloverleaf with a platoon on the, on the northeast side, two platoons sitting there down by the mosque so that he could cut this, he was essentially astride this road in a blocking position. One minefield that stretches from that military barracks over to almost almost to the sea. And that uh, that minefield only has one breach in it. And that breach is uh, is a uh, not a hardball road, but it's a uh, rough packed uh, hard road that's fairly recognizable. And what we found was happening is that people from all over Kuwait City and every place in southern Kuwait that were abandoning their vehicles and beating feet to go north were getting up to here and they had to drive had to go around Kuwait City. They obviously didn't want to go up here. They couldn't go on the road because our Delta company occupied it, so there was one remaining avenue for guys to walk north and they were just driving by there or walking by there in the uh, in the hundreds. They were dropping uh, guys were dropping their when they got to the to the hole in the minefield where we were sitting waiting to collect them up. They were dropping their weapons and they'd throw their mask down. Half of them were carrying a video cassette re recorder and stuff that they'd looted throughout Kuwait City. Yeah, that's just a big litter pile right now, of junk. Masks everywhere, junk. But all total, we policed up about 700 and 750, somewhere around there on the POW count. We were very fortunate that we uh, were light on the casualties, and we think that was largely because the, uh, these guys were just overwhelmed. The day before yesterday, uh, actually started uh, two days ago, early in the morning, scouts from a, uh, a sister task force observed movement in this area. It appeared to be armored column moving north. Uh, reported that, they continued to observe. Uh, Two armored, or correction, two mechanized task force out of the first brigade then observed, moved forward, and watched this column begin their move uh, through this area north towards the causeway and across the canal. They maintained observation. Uh, we continued to observe for quite some time. In the process of observing, the southern task force was observed by enemy forces. And the, the enemy forces opened fire on the southern task force, and that task force returned fire. At that time, the first brigade then uh, delivered artillery to the north. Uh, of the enemy position, thus blocking the position, uh, causing them to stack up their vehicles along this road and the road to the east. Uh, immediately thereafter, attack helicopters, Apaches were called in, and then they began, and once the artillery was lifted, to engage the armored column uh, on the road which we're standing now. Uh, the tanks, the BMPs were engaged, uh, creating utter chaos and confusion among the uh, fleeing Iraqis. 
pretty much uh, based upon the destruction uh, by the Hellfire, the 30 millimeter guns and the rockets, the Iraqis left their vehicles and fled into the desert. Uh, just as the Apaches cleared station then, my task force was, was uh, moved from a reserve position. We came up from the south, crossed into this area, and then we attacked to clean up this area from south to north through both the major roads. Uh, the road to the east carrying much of the combat support, combat service support vehicles, a lot of wheels, some tracks, and then this road to clean up and destroy any remaining operational vehicles. Uh, we moved forward to the causeway, destroyed uh, all the vehicles and all the trucks containing uh, ammunition. I might add that all the vehicles we found in trucks were packed uh, to the maximum load possible with ammunition. A lot of the ammunition crates I saw it was written in English uh, and it was from Jordan. What we are doing as we're going through now, we are assuring that all weapons and all ammunition are being destroyed. Uh, so we have engineer elements doing that uh, in addition to the soldiers in who are combing this area. We still we are continuing to take EPWs. We're processing those daily uh, and we are ensuring that prior to leaving that uh, any items of uh, military uh, significance or anything that could be used later on are destroyed before we depart. Yeah. 